Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barnett. Looking Point, we help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and of course, networking. Today, this is a continuation of our warehouse design video. We're talking about power, we're talking about backup, we're talking about device management. Let's go! We're back and we're talking about warehouse design. This is the continuation of what we started in the last video about warehouse design. We covered in the previous video, we covered the floor plan stuff, and now we're gonna be talking about power backup and device management. So, let's get rid of some of this noise here and um, let's start drawing. So the idea here is we've got our rudimentary warehouse. Again, I'll just draw basically our box. And uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is, is power and backup. So in this example, I'm going to assume that you have an MDF somewhere and you have an IDF. And the IDF will have some switches and uh, the MDF will have switches as well, but they'll be connected either through fiber or ethernet um, between these two areas. MDF will have switches, the IDF will have switches. And what we want to think about is if we have an IDF and it's in a warehouse and we're doing this in a location maybe on the floor or maybe up in the ceiling and you have a few IDFs scattered around. Uh, as an example, this isn't in any form or shape that's supposed to be how, how you would design it, but the idea here is the same. These are, we have, we have three IDFs, one, two, and three. And in this design, if I had these IDFs in the middle of the floor, it's very possible that you may not have great power control there. Or uh, if it's up in the ceiling, you need to be thinking about weight. And so if you have a UPS, uh, as an example, to, to manage with power, or if, if you had a power outage, you wouldn't want your network gear to go down for a period of time, or if you just had a a surge and it, 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 it took your network infrastructure down for a second and everybody has to wait, that's not necessarily a great thing. And so you're probably going to consider a UPS in these locations. And uh, really we have two options. If it's on the floor, you're probably okay. And if it's a clean area and everything, you could just stick a UPS in the rack and plug all your gear into it. So you have your switches here. Um, that's a switch. It's not a beautiful drawing, but you get the idea. This is in the rack. This is an example of your IDF. And so that would be if it's sitting on the floor. Well, what happens if you said, well, my warehouse design requirements say that I can't sit this on the floor. And there's a lot of warehouses that would say, I don't want this delicate equipment in the middle of forklifts. So in a lot of cases, people take these racks and they stick them up in the ceiling. Well, as soon as you get a rack of three or four switches, and a UPS or two in there, the weight of that unit starts to get pretty heavy. And when you're hoisting that up or you're, you're, you're mounting that up towards the ceiling, you know, you may just not be super excited about that. And then also the thought of what happens when I gotta replace that UPS? And I gotta get a man lift up there and I gotta take this 150 pound UPS out of the rack and, and, and navigate that down, up and down. You just wanna think through that logistics or those logistics and go, how do I make my life easier? And so one of the suggestions that we, we do for, for our customers is we would say in this type of environment where it's not on the floor, you, you aren't easily able to walk up to the rack and pull this UPS out. We would say, figure out a way to centralize your power. And there's a number of ways to do that. There's a number of products out there that, that would support this. And so fundamentally what you would do is you would have a panel and it would be a, this is a breaker panel as an, as an example, and you have a couple of breakers in here. And each of these breakers would run to an IDF. And so this would be a dedicated run for, you know, your electrician would run it, and it would run it to each of these locations, and you'd have some outlet there. And uh, this panel would go in to a UPS. And that UPS would have enough power to handle the, the requirement for these three racks. In addition to that, you would make sure that you're gonna have a main power feed that goes into the UPS. You've got the UPS sending that out to a breaker panel, a sub panel, which powers all of your IDFs. 
and then you plug your equipment there. Typically, you would have some sort of PDU here, and then all of your devices would plug into that PDU. Um, and based on how many devices you had in the rack, you would make a decision how big the PDU is, how big the breaker is, all those things. That's the electrical type design. So the, the circuit would be designed based on, based on the load requirement, and that's all uh, you know, up to you and your electrician. So we've got our main feed from the power company coming in. It goes into our UPS, which provides uninterruptible power, uninterruptible power source. That's what a UPS is. And it goes into a panel, which breaks out that support to each of these IDFs. Um, this is great. The one thing you don't want to forget is a bypass. And what a bypass switch is, is it says, hey, if this UPS breaks or I need to maintenance, provide maintenance for the UPS, I don't want to lose power to these switches out here. And so this bypass switch, you would flip the switch and you'd lose your UPS, but it would pass power directly from the, the outside or the utility through your breaker into all these, these uh, IDFs. And so that gives you the serviceability of this UPS, and it also gives you the flexibility if you needed to upgrade it, change batteries, what have you, or it just dies, because UPSs can die, you have the ability to bypass and just run, run without the UPS. Um, so that's always a recommended thing. So those are the things you want to think about when designing power. This whole system would probably be sitting in this MDF location. Um, and then the UPS would be sitting in a rack in that MDF location. And so this would be a way where you could distribute power pretty effectively and also get the added benefit of you could either do a managed PDU out here or you would have this breaker down at floor level in the MDF that would be labeled to each IDF and you'd have the ability to power cycle your IDF that may be 25 feet in the air or 10 feet in the air, 15 feet in the air. It doesn't really matter. Once you get north of about 8, 9, 10 feet, you're going to need a ladder. It's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a logistical item to get up there and power cycle things. So this gives you some flexibility around power management. You could always do a managed PDU, but if you're having network issues and depending on how you design your network, you may not be able to access the manageable PDU. And so this provides a, a, a nice uh, stopgap on the ground, easy to access for you to power cycle a IDF. So those are the power options. You got on the floor UPS, you got uh, an, a UPS centralized in an MDF. Those are the options of what you can do in a warehouse when it comes to power management. So now let's get rid of this and let's talk about what do we need to think about when we're thinking about management. So again, back to our IDF idea. Let's just say we've got two IDFs. This is number one, and this is number two. And we've got a switch in here. And we got uh, these IDFs are off the ground, let's say. Or maybe uh, there's no IT department in this warehouse, and that's very possible. A lot of times warehouses are in remote locations. And you may want to get console access to one of these switches. There's a number of ways where you could design management. Now management, uh, obviously you could SSH, Telnet, directly to an IP address if things are working well, but really I'm talking about management, out of band management when things aren't working well. If you only have one switch in these uh, racks, you really need to think about if I have a console server or some you know, single port console server, how do I get access to this remotely? And so if, I'm, if these are up in the air or I'm a remote and I want to access this single device, how do I get access to it? Well, if this switch is down or having an issue and this Ethernet connection, the way you connect to this console server, uh, is having an issue, you're not going to be able to access your out-of-band management. So it's not really a great design. So when you think about your MDF and you think of your connectivity to this IDF, you're most likely going to have a link to the switch. And that could be fiber, it could be copper, it doesn't really matter. Then you also need to think about, how do I connect to this console server? And my recommendation would be, in this case, would be to either, depending on the distance, it's either going to be fiber or it's going to be copper. It's either one of those two. And it's uh, FC could be a little confusing. Fiber, copper, they're two different mediums of connectivity. I would figure out how you are going to connect 
directly to this console server back to your core set of switching here. And so this would essentially have a connection, whether fiber or copper, all the way back to a switch and an MDF. And then that would allow you to manage it in the event that this switch is down or something is happening in here. Um, and so I would do that in every IDF. And this would really provide you an out of band management path if this switch was having an issue or you know this switch is having an issue and uh, you just need to get console access and it's 15 feet in the air you know lugging a laptop and getting on a ladder that doesn't sound very fun so we want to think through those those logistical things when it comes to management thought about them with power and uh, really as we go back to this that covers power and backup and device management and so essentially those are the two things you need to think about. We talked about floor plan, we talked about power backup, and now we talked about device management. As you're designing your warehouse, I hope this helps you as you're thinking through what are the things I need to be concerned about so that you know once I put this thing network into production, I have an easy way to manage it, I have an easy way to maintain it, and if something bad happens, I can access it whether I'm on site or remote. So those are the things I would be thinking about. I hope I covered it all. If I said anything in this video that you're like, hey, want to know more. Leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.